أم يجوز للرجل المحدث أن يقرأ القرآن وهكذا المرأة الحائض والنفساء والجواب يجوز لهم أن يقرأوا القرآن من غير مس إلا الجنب الرجل الجنب والمرأة كذلك الجنب لا يجوز لهم أن يقرأوا شيئا من القرآن حتى يعتصل أما غير الجنابة كالحذف الأصغر وكالحيض والنفاس فإن هذه لا تمنع من قراءة القرآن لكنها تمنع من من مسه لقول الله عز وجل لا يمسه إلا المطهرون ولقول الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام لا يمس القرآن إلا طاهر لكن بالحائل لا بأس أن يمسه بحائل ويقرأ والأفضل أن يكون الإنسان على طهارة في حديث عائشة عند مسلم قالت لقوله عليه الصلاة والسلام إني كرهت أن أذكر الله على غير طهارة حين سلم عليه شخص ولم يرد عليه السلام حتى أتى الحائط الجدار ف الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب شيخ محمد بن عبد الوهاب والصابي one of our scholars from Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah in Yemen, he was asked, is it permissible for a man who, ha who is muhdath, meaning that he does not have tahara, that he has uh, impurities, for him to read the Quran and likewise for a woman who is menstruating or during her post uh, natal bleeding, bleeding. The Shaykh responded Hafidhullah Ta'ala by saying, It's permissible for them to read the Quran without holding it, without touching the Mus'haf. Except for the Junub, except for the, the man or the woman likewise who has sexual impurity, meaning after having sexual intercourse or masturbating. Uh, or whatever is caused a uh, sperm or uh, orgasm, akramakum Allah, for the woman to have her fluid. And he said, this is the, uh, likewise the junub. And he said, it is not permissible for them to read anything from the Quran until they make ghusl, until they uh, shower. Or bathe. As for other than the person who has janaba, from the minor forms of impurity, meaning urination, uh, defecation, uh, and, and those things, akramakum Allah, like the haid and, and the nifas, the, well, the woman during her menstruation and the woman who is, has postnatal, uh, bleeding, then there is nothing prohibiting them from reading the Qur'an. However, they are prohibited from holding the Qur'an, meaning to, to, to touch the Qur'an. And this is in accordance with the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, where He says, لا يمسه إلا المطهرون, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they do not... Uh, then no one should uh, touch it except for the mutahirun, except for those who are pure, the purified ones. 
And then also the statement of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi salatu wa salam, where he said, la yumas, la qur'ana illa tahir, that the, no one should touch the Qur'an except for the one who is pure. And then the Shaykh said, Lakin, he said, but with a something that, like a cloth or something that will be, prevent the person from touching the Qur'an directly, the Mus'haf, then no problem. That if they touch it with uh, something between their hand and between the uh, Mus'haf, could be gloves or what have you, and then read. And he said, the best is that a person should be on tahara, that they should be purified. And this is in accordance with the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, uh, in, uh, collected in Sahih Muslim, where she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, verily I hate or dislike to remember Allah when I'm not on tahara, when I uh, when I'm not uh, when a person is not uh, on on tahara or in purification, he disliked. Inni karahtu an adhkar Allah ala ghairi tahara. That verily I dislike that I am remembering Allah uh, uh, on, in a state other than being purified. And this was in during the time where someone gave salams, greeted the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam did not return the greeting until he walked to a wall and he made tayammum. Then he returned the salams. Tayammum meaning that he used clean dirt to uh, in the place of washing oneself. Uh, for wudu. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with al nafi rizqan tayyibu amin al-mutakabbilin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.